In this lesson, we will be looking at doing simultaneous equations, so solving for two unknown variables, for example, x and y. And I'll be focusing on using substitution in this lesson. So we're starting off with a very basic example, easy example, one that we did in grade 9, grade 10. We've got two equations over here, x plus y is equal to 3, and 3y plus x is equal to 5. What I want to show you or illustrate with this example is that when we do substitution, when we do substitution, when we're solving for two variables, we've got two equations, we need to isolate. So our steps are isolate one of the variables in one of your equations. So when I say isolate, I mean get that variable alone. Get it standing alone on one side of the equation. So for example, you would say, okay, I'm going to isolate x in this equation. I want to get x standing by itself. How would I do that? I need to get rid of the plus y. The inverse operation for plus y is minus y. So what we've done successfully now is it's the same equation. So this is the same as this, but we've isolated x. So we've got an x to stand alone by itself by taking the y over. Opposite of plus y is minus y. This is my first equation. You'll see some teachers label it as equation number one. This is my second equation. I'm going to leave it unchanged. Then what you do is everywhere in the second equation where you see an x, so it's just one place, but everywhere where you see an x, we are going to put, we are going to substitute 3 minus y in its place. The reason why is because x is equal to 3 minus y. So instead of writing x, I am going to put this in its place and I'm going to write 3 minus y. So it'll be, for example, 3y. Then instead of x, we're going to put plus, we're going to put this thing, 3 minus y equals 5. Then what we do is we solve this equation. So let me just do it underneath here. We get the y's to one side. So 3y minus y. And then we're going to have 5. Inverse of plus 3, take it over, it becomes minus 3. So we've got 2y is equal to 2. And then we have y is equal to 2 divided by 2, 1. We've solved for our first variable. Then once you know your first variable, the answer, so y is equal to 1, in order to get the second variable, in order to solve for x, you simply take your answer for y and you substitute it in the place of y in the other equations. Let me use color. Instead of y, so y is equal to 1. So instead of y in this equation, we are going to put the number 1. So we're going to say x is equal to 3 minus, now instead of y, we're putting 1, because y is equal to 1. 3 minus 1 is 2. So my answers are y is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. Now that's a sort of substitution equation we did in grade 9, grade 10. So if you want more examples on that type of equation, go watch my videos on grade 10 substitution. I do more in-depth examples where I go over stuff like this a little bit slower. So this is basically the more entry-level stuff. We are going to take a look at more complicated substitution equations. And I want you to think of when you do substitution. Remember I said your first step is to isolate a variable. So if you take a look at this example, let's say, very similar to the previous one, but if I had to say, okay, isolate a variable. So choose a variable and make it the subject of the formula. Isolate it, let it stand alone on one side of the equation. I want you to think which variable would be the smartest one to isolate, which one would be the easiest one to isolate. And a lot of my students will say to me, ma'am, the X is the easiest and they're correct. Because if you make the X stand by itself, the plus 3Y, what's the inverse operation of plus? Adding 3Y, subtracting 3Y. So you've got the X standing all by itself. And then in the place of X in that equation, you will put 6 minus 3Y. Okay. What I want you to avoid doing. So that's what it says here in the second bullet point is avoid fractions if possible. So what I mean by that is say you decide, okay, I want to make Y the subject of the formula. So we're going to say, okay, I need to get rid of the X. This is plus X. So I then have to subtract X, but then the Y is still not by itself. 
I have to divide, this is multiply by three, so the inverse operation is divide by three. So you have to divide everything by three, like this. Yes, six divided by three can be written as two, so that's fine. But then over here, we have an equation. And we want to try and avoid, did I say an equation? I meant a fraction. We want to try and avoid fractions if possible. So for example, isolating y on this side would also not be the best idea because we would end up getting something like this. 8 over 3 minus 2 over 3x. And it is just more difficult to work with fractions. So try and avoid fractions. So let's do an example. So let's do a grade 11 example or a more difficult example. So I've said in the one that I've given you, here's your two equations, equation one, equation two. And I've started this one off a bit easier for you because I've said, why is already the subject of this formula? I don't need to go and do step one, which is choose a variable and make it the subject of the equation or the formula, because y is the subject of the formula. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute equation one into equation two. So what this means is I'm going to rewrite the second equation. As you can see, it already looks a little bit more complicated, but now everywhere where I see a y, instead of the y, I'm going to put x plus two. So instead of the y, I'm going to put x plus two because y is equal to x plus two. So instead of the y, open bracket, because this means multiplication, instead of the y, I'm going to put x plus two equals four. Now what I do is what you would normally do when you solve equations, you distribute the x into the brackets, you're going to get x squared plus two x equals four. And then in my playlist, I've said this countless number of times, when you see an x squared, you know that it is a quadratic equation. So you need to go ahead and make that equation equal to zero. So you should know what I mean by that. This is plus four. It's going to become minus four. So my equation is going to look, let's do it over here. It's going to look like this, just like that. And then I hope you say, okay, ma'am, that is a trinomial. So now you have to do a trinomial. You have to factorize that over there. And when you factorize it, you should get x plus four and x minus one. Now, the reason why this is different to ones we would have done in grade nine and 10 is because can you see x is equal to negative four or x is equal to one? Remember you make each bracket equal to zero. So what the step that you're not seeing is this. And then the inverse operation of plus four is minus four. Okay, but not necessary to write that. So I have two answers for x, two answers, which means I will then have two answers for y. Now, once you found your answers for x, you will sub your x into either equation, but equation one would be the easiest one to sub it back into. Okay, so here's your first equation. So we're going to sub x into that equation, that x. So in the place of x, in the place of x, we are going to put negative 4. So y would then equal negative 2. So if my x is negative 4, my y would be negative 2. Or we're going to do it again. So we're going to use equation 1. But we're going to put this x, 1, in the place of x. So y would then be 3. So if x is 1, y is 3. So I have two options for what x and y could equal to. I hope that that was helpful. If you'd like another example, let me know in the comments below. For more practice examples, just like this one, take a look at the equations playlist. I'll see you very soon. Bye, everyone.